Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm your friend in SXO. Today, let's continue our learning, shall we? So after we have read about the change making, we're gonna go to the next problem. The title for it is number of expressions with a target result. Yeah, I know this one. I mean, I made this problem before, but all I could do is use some weird strategy to solve that problem. Uh, but for now, with this book, we probably could learn a more efficient way to solve to solve those uh, um, quite difficult problems. So let's get started. Giving a list of integers and a target result, count the number of ways in which we can add or minus operators between the integers such that the expression that is formed is equal to the target result. For example, giving numbers 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, and target result 3, we can form three expressions to get the target result, which is this one. So what, what, what we need to do is to actually find all those possibility combinations for adding the eight symbol or the minus symbol that will eventually make the expression equal to the target value. That's what we want to do. And clarification for this problem, for this question. The question one, what result should be returned if the last contains a single number? A single number. Then the answer is no operators can be added in this case. So the only expression that can be formed in this given number is itself. So return one if that number equal to the result. Re return zero otherwise. Okay. The second question, what result should be returned if the last contains no numbers? If that result should be zero, oh, sorry, sorry, the, the result should be zero since no expressions can be formed. Yeah, that's right. How long can the last be? It may contain up to 30 numbers. You may think that this is not a, let's say, long number. So we, we, you may think that we do not have that much elements inside of it. But actually, even for this small number, 30, it will have so many possibilities that, that normally human cannot calculate out. The solution one, brute force, O2 to the n power times. A straightforward solution is to generate all possible expressions, keep only the, uh, the, the ones that are equal to the target result, and count them. We can generate expressions incrementally, assign operators one by one. For each operator, we have two choices, either to use the aid symbol or the minus operator, to generate all expressions, we first use the aid operator for the first operator. Then continue assign the other operators recursively. Then we revisit the first operator and use the minus this time. Then assign the other operators recursively once more. We apply the same row to the other operators. Whenever we form a full expression, we check if its result is equal to the target or not. If it, if it is indeed equal, then we count that uh, property. So here's an example of using this method on the numbers 1, 2, 3. Yeah, at the beginning, I say we don't know what kind of operators that we want to use, but we're gonna try to you know, separate it into two possibilities. The first one, we use the eight symbol. And for the second one, we use a minus symbol. But after that, here comes to another operator that we need to determine what kind of symbol we want to use. So we separate it again by using the eight symbol or the minus symbol. And the same process, uh, we, we do the same process for the second condition again. So in the end, we will have four possibilities. And for each possible combination or for each possible uh, expression, we will get a different result. In the end, uh, he didn't say that what kind of result we should get. So, so something like this, you, you could imagine that. And then we could, uh, let's say, represent this method by using or coding. So let's do that. We're going to define a function. The function name is count expressions. And we got all those numbers that we could use and the target result that we want to um, let's say it ended up with then we define a sub function for this function it will take the index and the partial result to be honest I don't know what the index means. oh okay it's just an index 
for example, this is the first one. So this probably be zero. And for this one, this is the second one. It's probably the index for it would be one. So what this function does is to count the number of expressions equal to the target result, given that the first index operators have been assigned. Thus, the left part of the expression is equal to the partial result. Yeah, I, I don't know the meaning of that, but, but we're going to continue to read this software or this block of code. If index is equal to the length of numbers, then probably we are done because that's, 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 uh, that's all those numbers that we could use. So if that's the end case, if that's the end, then we'll just uh, calculate out the result to say if that result is equal to the target. So we're going to say if the partial result is indeed equal to the target result, then we're going to return one, which means um, this is a possible result. Uh, for this problem. Otherwise, we'll return zero, which means this is not the right combination or something like that. Then for other cases, for other cases, for the operator before the Lambert's index, we have two options. The first option is to add a, add a sign. Um, what we what we do is we say the, uh, the count add equal to count index plus one. Of course, index should be aided by one because uh, for current index, we this is what we do. We, we already did that. So we are going to get into the next uh, position where we want to choose to aid a, aid a symbol or not. And then comes to the partial result. Yeah, of course, um, if we got the current partial result, then we're going to aid the one that we choose, which is uh, since, since we are aiding something, so we're going to use the eight symbol or the eight operator. Then we're going to add that value, which is a current indexed value uh, from that number last that we have. Or another situation would be the minus sign. Uh, for the scene, the index should be added by one, but the result, it is, it is different now. We should minus that uh, number for it. Then um, Let's say for each option may yield some valid expression sum up to counters. What that mean? What does that mean? All right, this is probably the most tricky part. You know, uh, you at the first you may think, oh, why he want to add the aid and the sub subtraction together by doing so? Why he want to do that? Well, in the end, as you would know, this is a recurrent function, you know, it will call the count, which is itself over and over again. In the end, what kind of value you would get? You will get either one or zero. So if he ate the, this variable and this variable together, that means that he just want to know um, whether uh, in the end we're going to get zero or not. If the two this one and this one, they both equal to zero. Then we add it together, we'll still get a zero. That means for this method or, um, okay, then, okay. That means that for this method, it will not, if, if they are both equal to zero, that means um, we cannot find a combination that will eventually give us the target result. But it's, if it's bigger than zero, that means we, we definitely uh, have a, combination out there that will add it up to the target result. I guess that's the meaning of that, but we don't, I'm not pretty sure about it. So let's continue. The first index is equal to one. Yeah, that makes sense. Then the partial results would be equal to the first element of that array. Okay, I can take that. Then what we're going to return is the count by giving the first index and that partial result. All right, so this is just an amazing let's say solution. In the end, if the value you get from this function is zero, that means we have no combinations to um, that could lead us to the result result, right? But if that number is greater than zero, then that's the counting for the right combinations that could add it up to the target result. Because for each one, we, we will add by one. For each possible combination, we will add the final result by one. Why? Because here we use the add symbol. And in the end, that's what we got. It's amazing. We, we, if, if I were him, I would probably do something else. For example, I would define a global variable right in here. I would say the counting equal to zero. And for each time, if that condition is matched, then I would say the condition would be aided by one. If I were him, I would do that. But apparently the other for this book, 
he got another idea for doing that. It's hard to say which one is the best, but I guess his he got the the the, the better solution than 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 me because if I somehow add a global variable, then um it will violate the let's say the the general way that people do when they just wanna you know put everything into a single function so that whenever he wanna use this function, he don't have to create a global variable, but but if he if if he do the same thing with my method, then then no matter who wants to use my function, he has to first define a global variable, which he, which can be a little bit dangerous and tedious, right? So okay, he got the the, the better solution than than me. I admit. So the the complexity is something like this: when n equal to the length of numbers, this can be powered by induction. If we increase in the input number last length by one, the number of steps we make doubles. Oh, that can be very bad, right? So we're gonna um we're gonna try to decrease the time complexity of this algorithm. The comp the complexity can be also be determined graphically from the tree we have drawn. For example, it is a complete binary tree where each node represents a step in the execution of the algorithm. The height of the tree is n, thus the number of nodes is 2 to the power of n minus 1, which gives O2 to the n power steps. Since we have to handle up to 30 numbers, the brute force algorithm has to make 1 billion steps, which is too slow. Yeah, I think so. If even for 30 numbers we're gonna calculate for 1 billion steps, then that would be too bad. So we're gonna try to do something to make it um, more usable. So we're gonna jump into the solution too. Dynamic programming, top down, O, N, S, time. We can speak up, oh sorry, we can speed up our computation if we notice that we are doing relevant computations. The previous example is too small to say any redundancies since there are no two expressions which with the same sum. Let's consider another example where the last of numbers is one 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 one. Uh well when I think about this it's also quite hard to for us for me to actually find a catching way to do the catching because I think for each operator it probably will lead to a different result. Um, but for this case, if he just um, put all those numbers as, as the same element, which is one, then for some partial result, for example, this one, this partial result will be generally the same as this one. They are both equal to one. So we found the two subtrees that are relevant: the prefix one plus one minus one and the one minus one eighty one. They have the same partial result one. You may do not know what I was talking about. What I say is that the two results they are equal. So so we they are relevant. We shouldn't calculate it twice, but instead we will just want to calculate calculate it once and use that result forever. So to avoid relevant computations, we can add a catch. For the helper function, so again we're gonna use the aru catch function. For this one, we'll just define a function like we did before. Then we're gonna use the catch function, the catch decorator boy. And since we didn't use in any, let's say any index, oh sorry, we didn't use any list or map, so it's a static value type. So in that case, if we use iru catch, we won't have any errors. Yeah, that's what he did. Um, yeah, as long, as long as we know we could use the catch method, this is quite simple. We don't have to um, actually go over those explanation. Maybe it's not necessary for us to read. Um, here he come to the third solution, but it has the same probably the same time complexity as we did here, as as we did before. The only difference part is that uh, it improved the memory efficiency. But I don't care about the memory efficiency anyway, because if we if we do the letter code programming, then uh, what the letter code platform cares about is the the time you use. If you if your software or if your code uses time more than what the letter code website expected, then you'll get a timeout error. Okay, 
uh, it seems like that we just finished the reading or the learning of, of this problem, number of expressions with a target result. So let's say I hope this video helps you, but it definitely helped me because I have learned a new difficult um, algorithm problem so that later if um, in my life, let's say, I don't know, maybe two or three years later, when I take an interview, when the interviewer ask me whether can I solve this problem or not, or if he ask me, can I solve this problem? I would say, yes, of course, it's a easy problem for me to solve. Then, that, then I would be very happy because if I could solve it, then I could get into that company. Okay, so that's it. I would see you guys in the next video. Bye.